Hi, welcome back to Linux. This is going to be a little more involved, but this is just getting your desktop ready so that you can use it for, well, actually anything. If you want to use it for hacking, you can. If you want to use it for word processing or just your, what we call the daily driver. This will make your Linux box work uh, like, like you want to. Okay, so first thing is text editor. So I've got a text editor open right now. I don't like staring at white screens and I do most of my writing inside of a text editor. And when you're looking at a white screen, that really, after a few, let's say 10 or 18 hours of looking at a white screen, your eyes really start to hurt. So I go to, um, I'm sorry, edit preferences. Inside of preferences, there are a few changes I make. First thing, the theme, I change it to Cobalt. That theme right there. That makes it a little bit easier in my eyes. And in the editor section, I display line numbers because I like to see that. I expand this out so you can see some of the features as I change them. I don't use the overview map. Now, if you want to, I say I don't. I sometimes use the overview map when I've got 10 or 20 or 30,000 words that I've typed and I want to see it by page, then I'll use the overview map then. So I do use it then, but I don't usually use the overview map. So I'm going to leave that off. The right margin, I do that all the time. If you can see, there is a difference in the color right here. It's showing you where a normal page is going to end. So it's giving you the columns across the page, and that's where it says it's going to end. And it says what column? It says that column 120 is where that page is going to word wrap. So if you're typing something, it's nice to know how far you've gone beyond where a normal page is. So you can see kind of where you're at. Uh, highlight the current line. I don't use that. I don't use matching brackets. The tab width is four. That's fine. But I don't like spaces instead of tabs. I do like it to put a tab character in. So a tab character is when you press tab. It actually tabs back and forth versus if you do it this way and hit tab, it's actually putting four spaces in there instead of a tab. So I don't want the spaces, I do want uh, tabs. So I'm going to delete that right there, click. All right, so we've got uh, that setting done. Then on the word wrap, I do have that on. I do not want to split words, so I have that off. And the scrolling, I use that all the time. So yes, I do want it to scroll. So there is a couple of settings that I choose. You may want to go over and tell it to save at a regular uh, time, so it just auto saves your files. I don't like that because I'm just copying and pasting so much and I'm ripping up files that I really don't want to save over one of my files. For instance, this is now saying that there have been changes made to this file that I did not mean to make. So I'm going to go back and undo those changes so that star is gone there. But that's my editor settings. So, you know, if those are the settings that you'd like or if you get where, you know, the white screen is really starting to hurt your eyes, then change over to maybe a darker screen. So. Having moving on, let's go over to uh, having that. Let's move on to terminal settings. Now the terminal settings, this little black box in the lower left-hand corner is your terminal. You can get to it from there. You can get to it from the menu. If you go up in the menu and type terminal, the terminal will come up. Or you can go down and you can start looking for some, uh, the terminal inside of administration. So you can look over there. You can also hit Control-Alt-T and terminal will appear on your screen. Now you not, may notice already your terminal might look a little bit different than mine because I made a couple of changes because the terminal really gets on my nerves as its default in its default setting. So the way you change that, you go to edit, preferences, and my preferences are I want it to be the initial terminal size right over here where I bring up my terminal. I want it to be 100 columns across and not the original. I think it starts out at 80. I want it to be 100 across and that gives me a little bit larger terminal so I can fit a little more text in the terminal without having to expand it. I do not want a terminal bell. That's every time you hit tab, it's going to go ding, ding, ding. You really don't want that. <laughs> um, next, the colors. I don't use the system theme. I'm using the green on black. And yes, some people might say, oh, green and black's really boring. Well, one thing, the black screen is really easy in your eyes. And I don't know, I grew up with green on black. So there you go. I don't want amber on black. I wonder if they even have that amber. No. 
Um, but green on black, it's one of those things that's very easy to see and, and it works with my color scheme really well. And I'll show you what that is. Transparent background, I don't want a transparent background on mine. So the transparent background just gets in my way. But hey, it's a preference. Maybe you like the transparent background and uh, you wanna use that. If you are experiencing some, you know, jitters in your, your screen, you haven't installed the, the NVIDIA's for your, I'm sorry, <laughs> the, the drivers for your NVIDIA card or whatever video card you may have yet, then turn off transparency. It makes it a little bit easier on it, but that should not be the reason you don't use transparency. You should install the proper drivers and uh, that, so transparent background should just be a choice. Uh, scrolling, I wanna make sure this is unlimited, so I do not wanna limit my scroll back. There's nothing to change here in the, uh, the command or the compatibility. I don't change anything there. So that is it. I make mainly, well, actually all I change is text and colors. It's part of the way, reasons I like Linux Mint so much is there's so little to change inside of Linux Mint. It's already set up very closely to the system that I've used for, well, let's see, I started using it in about 1993. Um, used Unix and systems before that let's see yeah this terminal I've only been using for maybe seven years these settings but um, Linux Mint I've only been using Linux Mint for about I would say seven or eight years um, switched from Ubuntu and before that Gen 2 and a whole bunch of other systems Sabayon um, that I used and Red Hat back when Red Hat existed as a free system um, Played with Fedora a little bit, Mandrake, Mandriva, etc. But Linux Mint works and it always just seems to get everything done. Ah, one of my commands. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, over here, the terminal settings, we got that, the bash settings. Now, this is going to get a little involved. So if you want to stop the video now and say, you know what, this is like overload for me at this point, and you just want to, to stop, that's fine. The bash settings, these are going to be my personalized bash settings. So when I bring up a terminal, and I type X, it will exit and do a couple of other things. If I type LL, it'll give me a human readable long listing format. Oh, speaking of those files, cat, uh, not downloads, but documents, and let's say I call it GLMark. Yeah, look at those GLMarks. So this is my GLMark 2 score with my 1030 card uh, with the drivers installed and that's without the drivers installed. These are without the NVIDIA drivers and with the NVIDIA drivers right there, which I should have calculator at the bottom so I can get the calculator really fast. I like calculator, so I'll pop that down there. So if I wanna find out how much that is, I'll take the 5868, and uh, all you have to do in Linux is highlight, by the way, and then middle click to paste. And I'll divide that, what was it, 295, and 295, let's see. That's a 19.89, so you can say that's 20 times faster. That's 20 times faster when you use the real NVIDIA graphics card, uh, I mean driver, driver instead of the Nouveau. I'm really, I once again, for the developers, I've said this in a lot of my videos, I really appreciate them writing the Nouveau drivers so that I can have a video when I boot my system, no matter where I am, and if I have the drivers or not installed. I really appreciate that. But um, after getting that done, go ahead and install the right drivers for your system. Now, when I say we're gonna make some bash configuration changes here, we're gonna change the bash RC file. So if we look over here and we do a cat dot bash RC, and I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it in your screen, maybe a little bit better. So once again, we're typing cat dot bash RC, and that's the normal file. I don't want to change the normal file. So the normal file is usually pretty much to my liking, but there are some things that I may want to change a little bit, or I definitely want to change or add. And so I've made that and I've put that in a bash, a bash file for us right now. In fact, I'll drag that over. I'm going to use our hot corner here. I'm going to go into the hot corner and grab the website and pull it over and we can see the uh, the paste bin site where I have, uh, which I'll put this in the comments, um, that I've put my bash settings. So these are my, my modifications that I use for bash. And if you want to go over and choose raw, you can look at that raw, I'll just do that. I hit control A to select all, control C to copy. Of course, you just right click, copy, right click, you can select, oops. Right. Check that. 
select all. And once you select all, you can choose copy if you want to. You know, you can certainly do that. Um, but once we have this all selected, so do, do that, I'm going to go over and I am using VI, so I'm going to use VI dot bash RC. You don't need to sudo this because this is inside your own directory. If you're not familiar with VI, then just pay really close attention to what I'm doing here and don't make a mistake. I go to the very end. The way I do that is through page down. So I go page down to get to the end. I press O for open a new line. That's the letter O. And then I hit control shift V as in Victor to paste the text I copied. So this is pasting inside of a terminal. You can't press control V inside of a terminal and right clicking. It may not work inside of a terminal. So hit control shift V, which usually right clicking works, but control shift V will paste. So that shift is critical there. We're hitting that control V control shift V. Now, once we've done that, and we can see that all these changes in here, I'm going to go through these changes, but first I'm going to save this file. So we've pasted the changes in here. I'm going to hit escape, the escape key, hit it as many times as you want, then colon W Q. That's right and quit. Enter. So there you go. That was VIing a file. And we, if you're going to follow the Linux series, then we will get into VI. There are only three commands you need to know in VI to be able to be fluent in VI. Uh, there are a bunch of commands. There are books written on VI, so you really go through that. But there are only three commands that you need to be operational inside of VI. And that is that command we just did, the escape colon WQ to get out and right and quit, colon Q exclamation point to get out without quitting, and uh, I for insert, to go to insert mode. So there you go. We'll look at that at another time. But now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and close this terminal, which I don't have to. I can hit Control Shift N and open a new one. Well, maybe I'll do that right now. It's just so you can see it. So Control Shift N, I do that. And now my terminal comes up and it looks different. It looks different than it did before. So if I go in this one, I hit Echo, dollar sign, let's say PS1. Then it'll give me all this kind of stuff there with, with what it did. Now if I go over here and do it, Echo, dollar sign, PS1, then you can see it's a little different. I've got some, some different options in there. And if you want to bring this color in, you can bring that color over here. That's totally fine. You can make, you know, that student at workstation one color. I'm using two colors. You can make uh, the student the same color as the at symbol, whatever you want to do. There are a lot of options. But let's go through that change now. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this one. Exit. I'm going to this paste bin, which once again, I will, uh, yeah, I'll put the raw in there. I will copy this paste bin. Let me just go ahead and drop over. And I'm going to go over here and let's look at three. There. I'll put the paste bin uh, settings right there in the file that I'll upload. So back over here. Close that up. So this is our terminal. This is our new terminal. I'll go ahead and type X for exit and it's gone. I'll open up a new terminal, bring that up. And you may notice a couple of things that are added to our terminal now. This line right here, that's new. That tells you what session line number you're on. So if you type, uh, I'll just say echo hello, and then you'll see that we're now on session line one. So it starts out with line zero. Now we're on line one, line two, three, etc. Uh, it tells you what the day is and the time. Wednesday, January 1st, 1540 hours, Eastern Standard Time. The year is 2020. And then it gives you your IP address. Now, if you have multiple IP addresses, it will list each IP address separated by commas across the page there. So if you have, like, let's say five or six IP addresses, it may word wrap. So you may need to watch that. We'll, we'll look at the code and how to alter that in just a second. But this shows your IP address. Now, for me, if, if maybe, maybe you're a teacher out there, you're a professor, and you're looking at, hey, how do I manage my lab and what do I do in my lab? Um, I'm always having to ask the students, hey, go ifconfig. I want to know so I can SSH into that computer or, you, you know, what's your IP address so you can look at the web server you just built, whatever. Well, there you go. This will always show your IP address every time you open a terminal. So every time you open it, your IP address is there. And to close it, of course, you can just hit X to close like that, and it will close it. So let's go ahead and look at 
the bash rc file. What is in that file? So I'm going to do a vi dot bash rc. Now when I go into this, you can see it's color coded inside my vim because now I'm using vim. And I'm going to drop down to where you see my little modifications. There we go. Now I'm just, just save my modifications, the ones that came out today. A bunch of these are standard options. I just make a huge history length but you're going to see that's not going to matter as much as we think it does in a second. This uh, shell option, that shopped is shell option. Uh, this check window size, that's when you resize the window, it will automatically uh, wrap the words in the right place for you. So that's a really nice thing to have. <clears throat> we'll uh, move on down here. I've got a couple things like set color. Uh, yes, I want to set that color prompt. There's some alerts that are built in. I think this is from Linux Mint. Uh, I'm not positive, but I think it's built in Linux Mint. That may be from another system. <clears throat> then there are other things on bash completion. I definitely want bash completion in there. And this is where things get kind of weird. So over here, this little function, that function write option, attempting, attempting to write history and verify ownership. Okay, well that pops up on the screen whenever you press the letter X to exit which is an alias right down there. What does this do? Well, the first thing it does, it changes the internal field separator to be a carriage return. That, that's just for file names and directory names that it's looking for inside your home directory. This thing is gonna go through and check the ownership. So it's gonna look at the ownership of your directory. If it finds any kind of discrepancy, then it's gonna go through and it's gonna to try to U-mount the GNOME virtual file system, which is uh, often you'll see that when you pop in a USB device or, or you're popping in a number of different systems like a, a telephone or things like that. And that usually doesn't get unmounted. There have been all kinds of problems with that, just not mounting and unmounting properly. But it's, you know, hey, it's there and it helps us out. It, it makes things, makes life easier. So I just try to unmount it and we'll see if it works or not. The next it goes through and it chones user, user, which you are the dollar sign user in this case, home, dollar sign user. So it makes your, your home directory there, which we could do home dir, but I'm just using home dollar sign user. It will do this recursively looking for anything that's not under your username and it will change, it will show you what has changed right there with that C. The two out to dev null just means if you encounter any errors, just pipe those to dev null. Just get rid of those. And then we unset the IFS. Down here, we have a bunch of aliases I use. So the LL, I want it to be color. I want to group directories first. I want it long listing. I want it human readable file sizes. The idea of that is when I type LL, I don't want huge numbers here. I want to know it's 384K. If it's a terabyte, I want to know it's like 1.4 terabytes. I don't want it to list a billion or a trillion, um, and, and I have to sit there and try to figure out what that number is when you've got one point, you know, one comma three, eight, nine comma, eight, four, three comma, two, four, six. I don't want to look at that because there are no commas and you have to figure it out yourself. Not, not fun. Um, so through here, grep, we'll get into the dash E option later but I definitely want the color in there. Uh, the dash E allows you to use regular expressions. It's extended expressions. So we'll, uh, we'll look at the dash E later. The find, the time find, that's just always so you can, I like to know how long a find took. And so it always tells me how long the find command I ran took. Moving and, and giving that interactive in case, uh, in case I'm overwriting a file or copy interactive in case I'm over, overwriting a file. VI, always use vim instead of VI. And then with whenever I type app get, go ahead and sudo app get that thing. Dpackage, go ahead and sudo dpackage that thing. Aptitude, sudo aptitude, which I don't even think we use aptitude anymore. Screen, which is not installed right now, do a screen dash L so it logs all the things that are typed. Uh, DD, which is convert and copy, but it's data dump. And that's the best way to remember it is data dump because you're dumping data over a stream or from a, from a block device. Uh, but it comes from Unix convert and copy, uh, which there is no Unix code inside of Linux. Linux is a completely independently developed operating system. It's just made to look like Unix. 
uh, for convenience. So DD there, I do want to progress on there. Some versions of DD do not support progress. So if you're using a system like, uh, uh, let's say if you're using CentOS, CentOS last I checked last year did not support progress. So I don't know if they've changed that, but their DD did not support progress. Uh, Nmap, I only want open ports to come back. So I've got Nmap open on that. Now here's the logout. It changes permissions and then it writes the history to a dot history dot save file and then it logs out if that completed correctly. Now over here I've got this backslash exit where you type X and it does a backslash exit or exit and it does a backslash exit. Now well it actually just does exit uh, but that this over here will just exit without running the alias and the reason I want that is if I type the letter X I don't want exit to then go down this alias and run the command again I just want it to exit by putting a backslash in front of your command like if you put a if you have a command like X well let me just do backslash X and it's gonna say I don't know what you're talking about if I do a backslash exit it's just gonna exit it's not gonna save to my history file if I type X, then it is going to run and run this little, that little alias. Now this prompt, it's inspired by Parrot OS. So I, I did fumble around with that thing a lot and make a lot of changes, but I really liked the initial idea created by Parrot OS. So thank you for the Parrot, from the Parrot OS. Um, thank you to the Parrot OS uh, security people out there. Uh, this, the inspiration came from Parrot OS for, uh, for what we've done here. And that just gives you your, your that funky looking uh, student at workstation, the little dollar sign, etc. Now this over here is where you get the prompt command. The prompt command is what is hovering above our prompt. So that prompt command pops up before the prompt itself. And that is var IP. This is the little convoluted command I'm using to grab the IP and rip it out. It can be done more efficiently than this, but this is really, really clear and it's uh, it's easy to follow. Um, now, some of you might be looking at that saying, what, that is not clear and it's not easy to follow. What are you talking about? Um, that's because we will look at building pipelines inside of Unix and Linux systems later on and you'll see how easily this comes together if you're building a pipeline. Now, I'll just give you an example right here. This ifconfig a grab inet and you can see how that pulls that out. And then I'll say, you know what? I don't want my, oops. I don't want the local loopback connection, that's 127001. And I don't want my IPv6 information on there. So I do that. And that comes back with this line. So I get one line back. Now that I've got the one line, then I just want, well here, I'll just go through and do this and type awk print and I'll just do dollar sign two on this one and you'll see that I get that right there. Now if I had additional interfaces then I want a comma there so I put a comma but if I put the comma there and I don't have additional interfaces or those additional interfaces run out and now I've got a comma at the end then well I'll want to get rid of that comma so one way to do that is reverse it so the commas first and then say cut characters and look at um, three back which was going to take that one two three right there and then re reverse it let me stop the word wrap here and just drag that out so now i just get that and that way it gives me a really clean output with a very simple, in fact, let me go history here and you'll be able to see this, a very simple pipeline. And this is uh, like a, a pipeline sled. So if you, you go through this and we're going through and creating a slide where we're sliding through the pipeline right here and we're just building that pipeline. We just put another pipe on there and we build that thing out. So for those of you who heard about Unix pipeline or creating a, a pipeline in Linux, that's what you're doing. Um, now, I'm not gonna dwell on that right now. That's for a future episode. 
but this was kind of involved and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close it out now so that's that's the bash prompt there I'm gonna go ahead and escape out of here I actually don't want to write that so I'm gonna say Q for leave so just Q don't make any changes and enter and I'm out and now I've got my terminal set up I've got my calculator and I've got text editor at the bottom. I just drag those down there. So if you have accessories, just grab something like screenshot, pull it down to the bottom of your screen and drop it there. You want to use that kind of a thing, just click it and you can use whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. So I hope that this video has been helpful. This did get a bit in depth. So if you're thinking, wow, this is a, this is a little complicated. The bash commands look a little weird. Don't worry. If you follow through the series or if you if you pick up uh, learning the bash shell or you start using linux you will pick this up in no time this will become like second nature to you um, now if you do have problems with it go ahead and let me know and uh, you know pop over and say i'm having problems with this i'm having problems with that what did you mean by this and i am glad to answer those questions right now i've got some time so i'm, I'm glad to answer those uh, when time gets squeezed a little bit, I may be a little late on getting back, but I'm always happy to answer the questions there and, and help you out. I want you to be able to share freely in the open source Linux revolution that has been hitting the world since 1991. And, uh, you know, big thanks to Linus Torvalds for, uh, for releasing that and making it open where we could all add to it. And uh, thanks to the other people out there doing a lot of open source uh, solutions for us that we can use those too. Anyway, hope that this is helping. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and pop those over to me.